everyone, it's me again, Mama Riel, and welcome to my YouTube channel. And also, welcome back sa ating mga um, bumabalik na viewers. Thank you, thank you so much sa inyong suporta. So, ayun na nga kung bago ka pa lang dito sa ating channel, is please huwag mo nang kalimutang isubscribe, like tong video, and ihit mo na din yung notification bell down below para naman palagi kang updated sa mga bago kong tutorials or mga bago kong vlog dito sa YouTube. So, ngayon nga is may panibago tayong tutorial and this is for grade 9 students. This is all about proportion. So, in this video, I'm going to discuss um, the differences between the ratio and the proportion, the types of proportion, and how are you going to identify an equation if it is a proportion or not. Okay, so definitely magsusolve tayo and gagamitin nyo ulit natin itong ating whiteboard dito. Ayan, so kung ito na yung lesson na hinahanap mo, sit back and relax and just listen on what I am going to discuss. Alright? the differences between the ratio and proportion. Um, the ratio is the relationship that exists between the size, number, or amount of two things and that is often represented by two numbers. So, for many times na discuss ko na ito dito sa ating YouTube channel. And remember, when we say ratio, it is represented by colon or a fraction form. Alright? While proportion is the equality of two ratio. Meaning to say, we are going to talk about two ratio in proportion. Okay? So, proportions can also be used in geometry when working with similar figures. But definitely, in this video, the highlight is only the proportion, not the similar figures. Okay? But then again, when you already know about proportion, you can easily solve for similar figures or the measurement of the similar figures because proportion and similar figures are related to each other. So, yun nga, these are the example of a ratio. We have 1 is to 2 or A is to B. Okay? So, palagi nating tandaan na si ratio is an expression. Why is it an expression? Kasi po, wala siyang equal sign for it to be called an equation. While si proportion, these are the examples of proportion, is already an equation. Why? Because it has an equal sign. Therefore, it is an equation. While si ratio is an expression. Okay, so take a look at this. These are the forms on how are we going to write a proportion. Okay, we have the colon form and the fraction form. Form. So, ito nga yung itsura ng colon form. Meron siyang colon sign. Ayan. A is to B as C is to D. And then, in fraction form, we have A is to B as C is to D. As simple as that. And then, right after that, there are also parts of a proportion. The means and the extremes. And dito nga, we're going to identify the parts of the proportion. Itong dalawang nasa dulo or nasa labas, sila yung ating tinatawag na extremes. While itong dalawang nasa loob, sila naman yung tinatawag na means. Okay? And these are the parts of a proportion. So, ang pagbasa naman sa proportion is ganito lang siya. A is to B is as C is to D. Meron siyang is as sa gitna. Okay? Di ba sa ratio, A is to B, C is to D. In Tagalog, they are both equal. Kasi kung anong value ng ratio na to, ganun din yung value ng pangalawang ratio. And that is what we call the proportion kasi nga equal sila or the equality of two ratios. Alright? So now let's talk about the properties of Proportion. So, when we say properties, ito yung mga bagay na mayroon kay proportion. Okay? Kanya lang talaga siya. Hindi siya pwedeng mawala kay proportion. So, we have six properties that we are going to discuss in this video. The first property is the means and extremes property. The second one is the alternation property. Third is the reciprocal property. Fourth is the cross multiplication property. Fifth is the addition property. And sixth is the subtraction property. So, saan nga ba ginagamit ang mga properties of proportion? So, ito ay ginagamit kapag i-identify natin if the two given ratios are proportional or not 
proportional. Okay? So, kapag yung dalawang ratio is nag-equal, therefore, that is proportional. Kapag naman hindi, that is not proportional. Alright? For example, in this first property that I am going to discuss, the means and extremes property. What are we going to do with this is to just um, multiply the means and the extremes. And na, sabi ko na nga sa inyo kanina, what are the parts of the proportion, the means and extremes? So, i-multiply lang natin. We have EF, yan, is equal to D G. Okay? So, para naman mas madali nyo siyang maintindihan, of course, meron tayong mga value dito ng mga letters na nandito. So, for letter D, that is equal to 1. E, that is equal to 2. F is 4. And G is 8. So, itong mga value na to is gagamitin na nga natin sa lahat ng properties of proportion na i-discuss natin in this video. Alright? So, I-substitute lang natin yung mga values. So, D is 1. Ito yung D natin. Therefore, that is 1. And E is 2. So, we have 1 is to 2. And then, we have F as 4. So, 4. And then, G as 8. Then, we are going to use the means and extremes property. Just multiply the means. We have 2 times 4 is 8. And then, of course, the extremes, 1 times 8 is 8. 8 is equal to 8. Yes, they are equal. Therefore, these are proportional. Or these two ratios are proportional. Okay, so what are the examples of not proportional? For example, we have 1 is to 4 is equal to 2 is to 3. Kapag ginamit natin yung means and extremes property, we have the means 4 times 2 is 8. And then, the extremes, 1 times 3 is 3. Are they equal? Of course, they are not. Therefore, these two ratios are not proportional. Ganun lang kasimple. Kapag yung sagot is lumabas na hindi equal, that is not proportional. Kapag naman sila ay equal, that is proportional. Alright? So, for the next property is we have the alternation property. So, what are we going to do in this is we are just going to alternate D to F and E to G. We have, ayan, D is to F and then equal to E is to G. Ayan, magiging ganyan lang siya. For example, we have etong value ng ating first term, di ba, ganyan, equal to 2 is to 8. And then right after that, we are just going to simplify. Since itong first ratio natin, is hindi na natin siya kailangan pang um, i-simplify. Kasi nga simplified form na siya. Ibaba mo na lang yan. And then as you can see, si 2 over 8, kailangan pa natin siyang i-simplify, di ba? Then we are just going to lowest term it. And um, we are just going to divide both sides by 2 since ito yung highest value dito. Na kayang i-divide si numerator and si denominator. So, we have 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. 1 over 4 is equal to 1 over 4. Therefore, this is proportional. And magagamit din talaga natin si alternation property para ma-identify if the two given ratios are proportional or not. For the next property, we have the reciprocal property. So, madali lang to, no? Alam nyo naman na madali lang talaga si mathematics kapag nag enjoy tayo sa ginagawa natin, right? Okay. So, what are we going to do in reciprocal property is to just reciprocate. Pagbabalik ta rin lang natin sila. So, si numerator and denominator, pagbabalik ta rin lang natin ang position. And of course, this one. Si E, magiging numerator. etong si D, magiging denominator. Is equal to si G, magiging numerator. Si F, magiging denominator. Okay? For example, we have one half. Therefore, siya ay magiging 2 over 1. Tama? And then, we have 4 over 8. Siya, of course, is magiging 8 over 4. Ganyan lang. Pagbabalik ta rin lang natin sila na position. Okay? And then, simplify. You're just going to simplify. So, 2 over 1 is equal to 2. Then, 8 over 4 is also equal to to 2. Diba? Remember, when we say fraction, it is also a division. Okay? 
So, 8 divided by 4 is 2. And they are, of course, similar. Therefore, magagamit natin si reciprocal property enable for us to identify if the two ratios given are proportional or not proportional. For the next property, we have the cross multiplication property. And i-share ko lang din sa inyo na itong property na ito and si means and extremes property, sila talaga yung mga gamit na gamit na properties para um, malaman kung proportional ba or not proportional ang two ratios given. For example, nawawala itong 2. Gawin natin siyang x. Ayan. Para ma-identify natin yung value niya, ang ginagamit natin palagi is si cross multiplication property and si means and extremes property kapag yung given is in a colon form. Since tayo ay nasa standard form, Ito ang ginagamit natin, cross multiplication property. Alright? So, balik natin siya sa 2. So, the cross multiplication property, what are we going to do is to just cross multiply. For example, ayan. Sila yung ipagmumultiply natin, silang dalawa and silang dalawa. So, we have 1 times 8 is 8. And 2 times 4 is, of course, 8. Of course, they are proportional since yung mga value nga natin na ginagamit is yung kanina pa natin ginagamit from the first property. Para mapakita ko sa inyo na kahit iba-iba yung maging sagot, basta both of them are equal, they are called as proportional. Alright? Now, we have the addition property. Uh, what are we going to do with this um, property is just to add the numerator and the denominator. 1 plus 2 Ayan, in ko lang siya. And then, over. Just copy the denominator. Alright, over 2. Same with this one. We have 4 plus 8. Over. Just copy the denominator, which is 8. And then, simplify again. So, we have 1 plus 2 is 3 over 2. And then, 4 plus 8 is, of course, 12 over 2. A. Just copy the denominator. And then, just simplify by using the lowest term. Okay? How are you going to lowest term? Um, you're just going to get a number wherein may divide niya itong dalawang to or the highest number na kayang i-divide yung numerator and the denominator. And then, since si 3 over 2 ay simplified na nga, therefore, ito na lang yung focus natin, si 12 over 8. Ano yung highest number na kayang i-divide si 12 at saka si 8? Wherein, mas mapapaliit niya ito. Okay? So, the highest number na makaka-divide sa kanilang dalawa na marireduce into lowest term, itong dalawang to is 4. Alright, we have to divide both sides by 4. And then, copy mo lang ulit 3 over 2. So, 12 divided by 4 is 3. And 8 divided by 4 is 2. And they are also the same. Therefore, we can use addition property enable for us to identify if the two ratios are proportional or not proportional. For the last property that we are going to discuss in this video is the subtraction property. Same lang ito ng process sa addition property, no? So, huwag kayong mali dito. Ang pinagkaiba lang, yung kanina is addition, ngayon is subtraction. So, we are just going to subtract the numerator and the denominator. Same with this one, alright? So, we have 1 minus 2 over 2. Always, ikakapi lang palagi yung denominator, no? Is equal to 4 minus 8 over 8, of course. And then, right after that, just do the operation and then simplify. Ganun lang palagi kasimple. We have 1 minus 2, that is negative 1 over 2. Equal to 4 minus 8, that is negative 4 over 8. Okay? And then, right after that, titingnan natin kung meron ba tayong masisimplify. Ay, simplify pa rin naman natin itong si negative 4 over 8. We are just going to reduce it to lowest term. Okay? Since dito nga kay 4 and 8, the highest number na kayang may divide si 4 at si 8 is, of course, 4. Hindi pwedeng 2. Uh, pwede si 2, pero hindi pa siya yung pinaka-highest number na kayang makapag-divide dito sa dalawa, di ba? Kasi kapag si 2, ilo lowest term pala ulit natin sila. 
'di ba? So, hindi din naman pwedeng lumagpas ng 8. Okay? Hindi hindi naman pwedeng si 8. So, ganun lang kasimple ang paghanap ng um, highest number na pwedeng mong i-divide sa kanila. So, we have to divide them by 4. And negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So therefore, we have negative 1 half is equal to negative 1 half. And they are similar. Therefore, they are proportional. And we can also use subtraction property to identify if the two given ratios are proportional or not proportional. As simple as that.